It was really invigorating to skate on Canada's 150th anniversary of Confederation rink on Valentine's Day 2017. An added bonus and unexpected surprise was the chance to cross-country ski on Parliament Hill with Canada's 29th Governor-General, Her Excellency the Right Honourable Julie Payette. She speaks six languages, plays piano, sings, and is an astronaut who worked with a crew on the International Space Station. All of this, and she is a strong cross-country skier. The duty of the Governor-General is to represent the Canadian monarch, currently Her Royal Highness Queen Elizabeth II. Thanks to former Canadian Senator, the Honourable Nancy Green Rain, we have a National Health and Fitness Day in Canada. She has been named Canada's Female Athlete of the 20th Century and received the Order of Canada. What a delight it was to be on the same track with these active outdoor enthusiasts. It was equally great to mingle with ambassadors, parliamentarians, educators and school children enjoying a fitness outing. And we have Visa Lettonen, the ambassador of Finland. Thanks for joining us. My father was a member of the Canadian military and fought in World War II along with his younger brother, Ed. These two men were as naturally active as any you will ever meet, and their military training gave them strength and endurance that lasted throughout their lives. They had the ability to make grave situations lighter with their quick wit and genuine compassion. Dad was strong and steady on skis and scored high marks for accuracy with a rifle. Uncle Ed joked that he had a license to operate an army tank before he got his license to drive a car. I know that they train daily to build their stamina and strength for the many arduous tasks they are required to perform as peacekeepers, peacemakers, and disaster relief specialists. All of that training pays off abroad and at home. We miss building that cohesion that we may have once have of, of living in quarters together. So by getting onto the sports field and teams, uh, working together, uh, relying on each other to achieve what we want to achieve, it's, it's very similar to what we do in operations. That's great. Excellent. When the Chinook helicopters and His Excellency the Right Honourable Governor General David Johnson arrived at Garrison Petawawa, I was able to capture the ceremony for growing our roots. It was His Excellency who suggested that Canadians should write their story for the Canada150.ca website, and I thought that was a great idea. He said, tell your story as though you were speaking to someone who had never seen your community. My research for a book about the history of Renfrew County had already begun, but hearing his request made me think of the viewing audience differently. The story now includes the author, family, friends, comrades, all naturally active in the county of Renfrew. To see the new hangar at Garrison Petawawa built for Chinook helicopters was a memorable moment for this writer. Thinking of leaving the ground with those thin rotor blades carrying the heavy craft and its cargo at speeds up to 350 kilometers per hour was exhilarating. Knowing their possible destinations brought me back to the stark reality of their intended purpose. On May 2nd, 2012, the 450 Tactical Helicopter Squadron was re-established to fly the Canadian Forces CH-147F Chinook Helicopters. The squadron is based at Canadian Forces Garrison Petawawa and reports to One Wing, Kingston, Ontario. One of our many natural resources and a good neighbour to the county of Renfrew is Algonquin Provincial Park. It was established in 1893 and is the oldest provincial park in Canada. 
The park is a playground for nature lovers who travel from all over the world to enjoy wildlife in their natural habitat, to hike in old growth forests, and paddle or swim in pristine waterways. We all do our best to keep it that way, and a visit to the Department of National Defense Fire Department shows us that with the right education, training, and equipment, lives and resources can be spared. As I video captured the required daily training exercises of the DND firefighters, I reminded myself that many are called, but few will answer. This works. This is called a class, a uh, level A suit, uh -huh. and um, the user would put on don an SCBA, like without the bunker yes. gear on, and then they would get in this self-contained breathing apparatus. That's correct. Yeah, and then they would zip them in, and um, oh. they would be contained in the suit. Claustrophobic. You wouldn't want to be. You can't be claustrophobic in this. Uh -uh. No. The way it works is there's uh, certain hazardous materials that we can get close to. Or, or we can touch. Right. Before we actually get into the suit, we have to find out what the compatibility is with the chemical or the product that we're dealing yeah. with on an incident scene. Um, there are some some chemicals that we can't go near, like corrosive materials that would eat through the suit. So we have to get that information before we actually get in the suit. But it allows us to go into environments that um, you wouldn't be allowed to with your SCB with your and just bunker here. here. Yeah. Shortly after I finished my video capture with the firefighters, a lightning strike started a forest fire at Garrison Petawawa, and increasing winds threatened to spread the raging fire into Algonquin Park. Campers in the park were evacuated by the Ministry of Natural Resources, and ground traffic was rerouted while firefighters did their best to contain the fire. Thankfully, it was extinguished before it reached the park line. If it happens on the base, these courageous firefighters are there to help. Anywhere, anytime. As a young girl, I learned from my Aunt Bridget that the soldiers who were on the troop train that crashed with her passenger car in Almont in 1942 stayed with her, giving blankets and words of comfort as she lay in the cold snow. Mac Beatty, a well-known composer and entertainer at that time, got a newspaper clipping from his mother telling him of the tragic news. He was serving with the army overseas, and from the news article, he wrote the train wreck at Almont song. His artistic endeavors inspired me to write and compose this musical tribute to him. When Matt Petey sings in heaven, we can hear it here on earth. Mac wrote volumes about our county of Renfrew, 
and the Ottawa Valley, and much of what he recorded is still played on radio today. The county of Renfrew is known far and wide for its entertainment. about my story, Bruce McIntyre, journalist for the Eganville Leader, asked if I had any Irish poetry for the annual St. Patrick's Day publication. There's something really joyful about the wearing of the green. It seems there must be 40 shades with nothing in between. The shamrock stands for Trinity, and this we know for sure. St. Patrick taught three persons in one God who still endures. When we hear the name St. Patrick, we think of Ireland but most in Renfrew County think of Douglas and a band. He might have been 5th century, a patron saint and all, but we think he's a hero through the centuries that call. On St. Patrick's Day of Honour, we like to drink green beer, and people come from miles around to raise a glass and cheer. The parties have been known to last for days and weeks on end. In Irish style, we come to life and bend the ears of friends. Each year, a very grand parade rolls slowly through the streets. The green lights can be seen for miles from all the mountain peaks. Irish tunes will warm the air and dancing feet will fly. Folks will walk or drive the route, and you won't hear one cry. There is a Mount St. Patrick that we love dearly too, where all St. Patrick's pilgrims still celebrate his truth. They sing his praises far and wide on radio and stages. The air is filled with laughter, and it really is contagious. I'm sure St. Patrick would have loved the wearing of the green. It warms the final winter days as signs of spring are seen. St. Patrick was a man of faith who filled the world with love. And we can celebrate because he sends it from above. Railway Park in Killaloo Station is also a great place for some fresh air and original Celtic music with the Searson family.
You may also have heard of Ish Tileheimer or seen a Stone Fence Theatre performance. One of the things that prompted me to turn this story into a movie was the fact that I thought Joan Finnegan missed a large part of who we are as a people when she wrote the award-winning Best Damn Fiddler from Kalabogi to Kaladar. After watching the presentation about Joan's life, titled I Come From the Valley, I have grown to admire and respect both Mr. Tileheimer's and Miss Finnegan's work, not to mention the multi-talented Stone Fence Theatre troupe. I am a girl, and I intend to be one. a maple tree to someone who has never seen one? The maple tree brings much more than beauty to our nation. Canada's flag displays a maple leaf in a bright red, and one National Hockey League team thinks the leaf should be in blue. In spring, it may have many shades of green, and in autumn, 
you will see a beautiful display of red, orange, and yellow. The best of cameras and the finest technology can change the very hue, but it must be seen with the human eye to really be appreciated. People travel from all over the world to see and photograph this grandeur. Maple trees run with sap that can be boiled for maple syrup, and everyone loves this sticky treat that can be sipped straight from the tree or rolled up on a stick. It takes a lot of sap and a whole lot more work, but Canadian maple syrup is exported and appreciated in many countries. One more. When Willie, Kathleen O'Brien, and friends harvest these red pine trees in the Shaw Woods, they are sold and used for utility poles all over North America. <laughs> Just do a nice safe one. One, one is good enough for me. Thanks very much. <laughs> as long as it's not going to drop this way, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> you got a good view here? I do. Perfect. The Campbell Sawmill in Admaston Township was home to an outdoor woodlot association gathering. Educators helped to so teach to woodlot owners about grading their products. Wood, you get the sawmill in to saw your lumber for you, probably only have to cut about 10,000 feet of logs. After decades of operation and new technology, this type of mill will soon be a thing of the past. Trees and those who make a living with them bring a bounty to our county which has been named the capital of forestry in Canada. Portable sawmills help many woodlot owners to make a profit from their investments. Established in 1956, Ben Holcomb and Son Limited now have a fully operated mill and recently announced that they are adding new technology to increase their production. Have you ever seen an alligator boat? Historically, it used to pull logs down a river and it had the ability to winch its way across the land. Dr. William Burwell and his friends decided to build an alligator so that students in the county of Renfrew could learn more about how deeply our roots do grow in forestry. Marge of Lake Lillibarge, a derelict there lay. It was jammed in the ice and I saw on it thrice. It was called the Alice May. The Shaw Woods Outdoor Education Centre was created for the purpose of educating our children about the importance of maintaining and preserving our forests. It seemed only fitting that the Alice May should find a home in the Shaw Woods. One sunny autumn day in 2019, Dr. Burwell's family and friends gathered to celebrate his life and legacy. Unfortunately, Bill passed away before the dedication, but his memory will live on in the hearts of his admirers. There are strange things done in the midnight sun by the men who moil for gold. The Arctic trails have their secret tales that make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was that night on the marge of Lake Labarge, I creamed Sam It is interesting to note that some country folk call it a forest, while others say they are going to the bush, the woods, or out into the wilderness. One way or the other, there's always plenty of activity. And if you're going to ride, ski, or hike the trails, be certain that others know where you are. Stay away from private property unless you have permission to be there. Canelli Mountain Motocross and Urban Sport got together to host a day where we could learn yeah. to ride safely through the mountainous terrain. Straight, sit down in the corner. Okay. Uh, get your leg up. Yeah. Elbow Elbows up. up? And why would you do that? Just because it's better for balance? <laughs> the Griffith and Mattawachan Fish and Game Club host an annual Redneck Golf Tournament. 
and they also roast a pig to feed the hungry participants. Shucking corn is done by members, and they are happy to help out. This is a very hospitable club. Hunting is a popular sport, and at certain times of the year you might hear a gunshot that can bring a partridge or venison to your table. There are hunters with bows and arrows, and if we don't eat it, we don't shoot it. It takes plenty of practice to shoot a duck in full flight, but many hunters have generations of experience to rely on, and these hunters can even teach you how to play the guitar. There are many regulations and licenses to purchase, so be sure to read up on this before you begin. It's good across, and that's where I said if I'd come in from British Columbia for the weekend and said I want to go fishing with my buddies, yep. what do I buy? We would sell you a Canadian resident. Now the one day would be twelve sixty-seven. Right. Or you can go ahead and buy your uh, your card and, and get whatever you want. Yeah, just, just in case you're back and forth. But it's okay to have licenses in every province, and you can oh, just for sure. a hunter safety course and gun permits are needed before you hunt and an outdoors card must be purchased before you go fishing. If you're really lucky, you might win a hunting prize at Gurley's Big Buck and Doe Contest each fall. The village of Douglas hosts a fishing derby and some will teach you how to fish from a canoe or through the ice in winter. It's easy to stay naturally active year round in outdoor Renfrew County. When walking through the forest, stay on the beaten path okay. because our trappers have set traps to harvest these lovely so furs and leathers. They are used to make warm clothing for the sometimes harsh Canadian climate. The Ontario Fur Managers Association donated a kit to the Shaw Woods Outdoor Education Centre. Thanks to your committee members here and specifically Ron Deshane, uh, a year or so ago came to us and wondered if we could provide a fur kit for educational purposes for you, you guys. And we feel it's very important that you do get to see all the uh, fur-bearing animals. And uh, so we have put together this kit to uh, give to the uh, Shaw Woods Educa Outdoor Educational Center so that you and, and other students will be able to enjoy it. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. That's awesome. What's this big old guy? Wolf. Wolf or coyote? Wolf. Wolf? As opposed to coyote. Coyote, here. Okay. See the wolf. So how do I tell the difference? No, wolves are usually bigger, although we're running a bigger strain of uh, coyotes in the area. Okay, give the man well, some room. Those are, those are there we go. This Thank is you. This called an ermine. This is a summer coat. They change their coats in the in the winter. Why would they change their coats in the winter from this to this? Camouflage. He's going to be a hunter. Red squirrel. Mink. Otter. Otter. Your buddy. Muskrat. Paintballing is another activity you need to be aware of before you go exploring. Athletic and adventurous friends enjoy this sport in all kinds of weather. They state the rules, create teams and strategies, and then the paint war is on. You do not want to wander onto private land because you might get shot. And here's a thought, you could get lost and need to call for help with no cell service. These hunters know their own territory and they respect and obey the rules of hunting. The forest and all its inhabitants are well managed in the county of Renfrew. Trees give nourishment, housing, heat, and paper products to name a few basic needs. Forests are for life, and the Ontario Woodlot Association helps people to educate landowners about how to care for the trees. Thanks to foresters, and valued tradespeople, the rest of us are able to enjoy the comforts of a home with a solid roof over our head and fire in our hearth. Algonquin Park was created in 1893 to give sanctuary to our wildlife and protect five rivers and the headwaters of their watersheds. This park has helped to slow soil erosion and reduce flooding, but flooding has occurred on a number of occasions. In Barry's Bay, I was able to attend a timber festival and learn some of the finer skills of working with wood. There was even an axe throwing contest, which was fun to watch. Yeah. 
The Bonnashire River Watershed Project, BRWP, was founded in 1998 to protect the watershed and educate those who enjoy the benefits of living within it. Bonnashire Provincial Park at Round Lake has a great footprints in time trail that has you forgetting about time altogether. As a past three-year municipal councillor for the town of Renfrew, I was appointed to sit with this BRWP board of directors and it was an honour to work with such a fastidious team. Many farmers and landowners were able to work with the BRWP and plant trees to help maintain the stability of the banks of the Bonnachere River. The passion and skills shown by those who were born and raised in the forest industry can be seen through the generations. Plant a tree to clean the air and breathe in every moment, for the foresters are bringing life to all. Each year, the forestry industry plants an average of 68 million trees across the province, creating jobs for foresters, nurseries and tree planters, without the use of funds from taxpayers. Their contribution helps to reduce thousands of tons of carbon from the air. One famous County of Renfrew family began with the late Senator Michael John O'Brien and Jane Barry. MJ travelled on foot through the rugged landscape, carving a route and contracting labourers to build a rail line that would connect Kingston and Pembroke. He met Jenny on the cattle and sheep farm owned by the Barry family in what is known today as Barryvale. Michael and Jane married in the town of Renfrew in December 1883. They built a home, raised a family, and began growing their roots in community. They seeded the National Hockey Association, which grew into the National Hockey League. They were known for having strong values that would ensure education, employment, recreation, and entertainment for everyone. It was a historic day at the National Hockey Museum in Renfrew when the O'Brien Cup and the Stanley Cup sat together for the first time. The KNP Incorporated in 1871, and by 1884, approximately 180 kilometers of rail line reached Renfrew. The Canada Central Railway had already built a line from Renfrew to Pembroke, therefore the KNP was terminated at Renfrew. MJ and Jenny enjoyed their own private rail stop at that summer home on the Barry Farm. Their private rail car also made a stop at the back door of their home in Renfrew. Today, many outdoor enthusiasts walk, snowshoe, cross-country ski, ride, and drive the old K&P trail. It is well maintained by the County of Renfrew, and it continues to keep our communities connected. The O'Brien name is still linked today to both Renfrew and our prior theatres. Have you ever watched a movie in an O'Brien theatre? The first movie played in 1930, and that brought great excitement to the area. The best thing to happen to movies since that day was the fall of 1993 when entrepreneur Murray Adolph purchased the theatres. In January 1994, Renfrew's O'Brien Theatre reopened to rave reviews with the movie Mrs. Doubtfire. In recent years, in order to keep up with technology, at great expense, Murray took the theatre from real film to computer-generated yeah, movies. The screen, and uh, okay. the ads will start about uh, 20 minutes before movie time. With barcode projectors and GDC servers, they are able to present state-of-the-art films, movies, and videos. The O'Brien Theatre Renfrew Film Group is also a huge hit in the Ottawa Valley. On July 1, 1999, Murray created a business partnership with Kevin Marshall and purchased the then derelict O'Brien Theatre Armprar. It reopened on June 2, 2000 and Kevin took full ownership in 2003. Entrepreneurs Kevin and Kathy Marshall have done the same stellar job of maintaining big screen digital entertainment in the county of Renfrew. They rescued the Skylight Drive-In from closure in June 2014 and reopened in time for the July 1st long weekend that same year. The Skylight Drive-In located in Laurentian Valley is one of Renfrew County's favorite outdoor entertainment offerings. In the mid-90s, the speaker boxes were removed and replaced with an AM radio system. Today's FM radio system has a range of one kilometer and broadcasts on 106.7 FM. 
by investing their capital and countless hours of labor, Murray, Kevin, and Kathy, like MJ O'Brien, have given employment and entertainment to many. These industrious individuals love their work, and we love them for it. The O'Brien Apartments, owned and operated by the Masons, was once an opera house, and Senator O'Brien hired local contractors to construct it. At the time of MJ's death, schools in Renfrew were closed so that everyone could attend his funeral. In 1967, citizens honored him by naming the O'Brien Park. In 1949, the Barry Farm was purchased by Mr. and Mrs. Fred and Dorothy Fleming, and they continued to farm the land until 1983, when their son Rick Fleming sold the livestock and created a beautiful and challenging 18-hole golf course, which ranks among the top 50 in Canada. There is a popular housing development that is scattered over the rolling landscape, and their hospitality is second to none. The Fleming family hold the same values that the O'Brien family did. They bring employment, entertainment, and recreation to their community. On one visit to the Calabogie Highlands Resort in the summer of 2019, I enjoyed seeing cross-country horse races and had a chance to speak with riders who came from miles away. Their presence reminded me that horseback would have been the main type of transportation when the county of Renfrew was being formed. The Barry family and many others would have traveled across the rocky terrain of the Canadian Shield on horseback or with horse-drawn wagons. At Richard's View Stable in Laurentian Hills, Christine Scarf Cole and her husband Brian Cole have a true appreciation for all that horses can do, including improving one's morale. They run a well-known Gestalt equine psychotherapy practice called Just As I Am. And the magic that happens between human and beast is too great for words. Roads were forced as settlers made their way from Europe to create a new life in Canada. Today, large construction companies continue to pave our way and keep the multitude of motorized vehicles moving on a safe path. Those who construct our roads deserve a salute and those who maintain them have my undying gratitude. Speaking of transportation, Rick Fleming, his son Chris Fleming, and Mark Steenbackers had the vision and creative drive to build the renowned Calabogie Motorsports Park, which opened in 2006. It's Canada's largest track, 40 feet wide, with 20 turns and a 2,000 foot straightaway. Racing enthusiasts come from long distances to learn and test their driving skills, the track currently gives valued employment to over 50 people. I was fortunate to video capture a bicycle race on a chilly spring morning, and I could feel the excitement in the air as I walked among the competitors. Memories of being on the track still rev my engine. They always seem to be building a new garage to house and maintain the participants' vehicles. Qualified instructors teach courses about how to drive safely in all conditions, and it benefits everyone to take this training. Like many others, Mr. and Mrs. Paul and Elizabeth Murphy work tirelessly to bring employment, recreation, and entertainment to the region. Their well-maintained four-season resort, Calabogie Peaks, improves the economy for local residents and visitors. If you can't get to the ski hill to see some of Canada's top skiers competing on the slope, you can watch them from the trail cameras that the Murphys provide on their website. It doesn't get much better than that. Whether you are hiking Dixon Mountain, taking the lift for the view at the top, or enjoying the thrill of skiing and snowboarding, the excitement is non-stop. The resort also offers a great beach for swimmers, and Calabogie Lake will challenge the strongest paddler. Since 1969, resort investors keep improving the landscape with more housing and accommodation, which also keeps trades and technology enthusiasts gainfully employed. Long-term and new residents, along with thousands of annual visitors, appreciate what County of Renfrew business owners and residents have to offer. As a business owner who benefits from the success of other local businesses, it is a pleasure to see the Township of Greater Madawaska grow. They continue to raise the bar of excellence, one notch at a time, and the County of Renfrew is a better place for their efforts. 
waterways were the first highways, and First Nations people carved canoes from birch bark trees so they could fish and travel on the lakes and rivers. They shared their skills with settlers so that they too could inhabit this rugged land. The Museum of History in Hull offers a beautiful display to remind us of the ingenuity of First Nations people and early settlers. Samuel de Champlain explored our region and he has been immortalized in stone at Logosland Resort in Whitewater region. Local artist Richard Gill portrays Champlain's adventures in sandstone. A young farmer found Champlain's sextant, which is a piece of navigational equipment that helps Samuel and his crew to map this rugged land. The Pembroke Museum has a great display with instructions about how to use a sextant. First Nations people met this group of courageous voyageurs and helped with their exploration. Today, there are a number of rafting companies that will guide you through the rapids. If you're lucky, you may also get to paddle a voyageur canoe and have a feeling for what it might have been like all those years ago. Established in 1981, Canadian whitewater kayak champions and owners of owl rafting gave folks a chance to be voyageurs, and I was lucky to be a part of a crew that paddled this incredible craft. Claudia Dirk and the Van Wyck family also owned the Madawaska Canoe Centre, which they established in 1969. They grow their own food and are as eco-friendly as any business people you will ever meet. This is agritourism at its finest, and they are working to preserve and protect the land and the watersheds. When I think about the early years in the county of Renfrew, I am reminded about the large tracts of land that agriculture specialists worked with rugged farm equipment. These hard-working individuals are also foresters who cleared the land to plant crops and grow food for their families, communities, and their livestock. They created roads by cutting trees and used the trees to build and heat their homes. They were contractors, carpenters, and skilled in many trades. They learned to construct barns and how to preserve and store food for themselves and their animals. They also built churches and schools. This helped to get them through the unpredictable and often harsh climate that nature can present. Farmers don't just feed themselves, they feed the world. With their courage and fortitude, Renfrew County farmers are outstanding in their fields. No pun intended. The judges at Canada's Royal Agriculture Winter Fair keep the County of Renfrew farming community at the top of their list of winners as well. Um, that we've raised. The next one beside her is another, uh, it's a heifer calf born this year, along with another one that was born uh, February and January calf. The Enright family allowed me to attend their cattle auction with my cameras and that made me aware of the amount of work that goes into keeping us nourished with top quality Good afternoon, food. ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our second annual sale. Good on you, you've got great cattle, many of them are entered in the Royal Winter Fair, and here it is, Keith Cassini. We've uh, selected to start uh, the limousine portion today. Uh, you'll uh, go ahead and bring our uh, first lot in. She is an added lot. Uh, it's, uh, it, you, you picked up uh, the uh, added sheet. Uh, there will be lot 77 and 77A. We've had lots of interest in this pair. What we'll be selling to you is the great 77 cow, uh, the daughter of, uh, of Asheville that goes back to the great lovely cow family. You look at her, uh, she's certainly uh, one of the greatest limousine females, not only in the Enright uh, program, but in Canada and the United States as well. And uh, at the other side, it's a great uh, uh, bull calf started by the great uh, West Wind. Uh, this will be the first West Wind uh, limousine calf uh, to sell uh, in, in Canada. What we're going to say, the, these calves were entered in the Royal Winter Fair. What we'll be selling to you is uh, one half embryo interest in the lot to 77 cow and full interest in full possession in the calf. They can retain possession of these through the through uh, the Toronto show, and after that, the uh, the owners can take possession. Lot 77, 77A, pick and choose. All right, give me one of my foot. Give me one of my how much you? Give me one of my twenty thousand dollar now. Give me one of my twenty him, one of my twenty him, one of my twenty thousand dollar boy. Give me one of my twenty him, one of my twenty him, one of my fifteen. Give me one of my five thousand now six thousand. Give me one of my five, give me one of my six thousand. 
person who enjoys and knows the nutritional value of dairy products, I have great respect for anyone who can get milk from a cow, process it, and have it delivered to a store where I can make a purchase and serve it to my family. Van Lindenberg Farms offers a rotary milking barn, and they are also fortunate to have an automated calf feeder that includes computerization. This combination helps them to ensure the proper amount of feed and if the animals need medicine, a computer helps them to add it to the formula and the calf drinks it in with ease. Not all dairy farms have such advanced equipment, but since I captured this video, more technology and robots have been added to several farms. With robots, farmers do not need to be in the barn when the cows are being milked. We're having a little nap, so they got to stretch first. The ear tag in the rear for yeah, identification. With the, with the computer chip. Okay. It'll come in here and the computer will recognize it. Okay, you, you're eligible to be fed. Every two hours they can get a, a small meal, like, for, like a liter or two of milk. Okay. So as soon as that calf walks in here, the computer's going to say, okay, you're allowed to get some milk. There's a calf coming in now. And she's not allowed to get anything. Oh, because her tag gets read by the computer. Yeah, so there's a little button tag in here. It'll tell the computer to, if she is eligible, this thing is going to make up the batch of milk for it. Basically, it makes this, put the batch in here, and the calf will suck it, the milk out to the line. The calf can get a drink of milk whenever she wants. Yeah, no kidding. Because as you can hear, they're not the ones bawling, it's the ones that are in the individual ones that are bawling for milk now. But still, are you, like this one's coming in here now to get fed. Come in. So the she tag. There. If you come over here, it can make okay. Okay, and then it goes down through the machine and out the line and over here. And this guy gets to drink. How old were they when you got There are those who grow their own chickens and raise their own eggs, but be sure to check with your municipality before setting up a chicken coop on your property. More than six months old. They have to be six months to lay? Well, these ones are, but I'm not sure about those ones. Okay. And how do you get a rooster to crow? But you could compete with them, right? Yep. Very nice. And will you do it again next year? Yep. <laughs> so these are just for laying eggs? Yeah, well this big one right here, it can either, it's a boy. Okay. So we, we might use it for meat, but there's a chicken thing tomorrow where you can sell them. Oh good. And I'm saving up for a mini fridge to keep my eggs in, so I might sell them. Okay, and, and then somebody else can have them for dinner. Yep. 
the local farmers bring fresh produce to us in the growing season, and many learn about safe methods to preserve food for cold winter months. Some horticulturalists have gardens in their backyard to grow fresh vegetables and fruit. I even got to feed a goat during my research to learn about agriculture. In the county of Renfrew, there are a group of generous and caring individuals, businesses, churches, and organizations who sponsor the Food Grains Bank. Each year, one farming family sows and harvests a crop of grain. The profit from the sale of this crop is donated to the Food Grains Bank. The Canadian government matches the donation four to one. Proceeds are used to help people in foreign countries who through no fault of their own are dying of starvation and many illnesses that are related to malnourishment. My bit part on the world stage took me to Africa at a time when terrorists had just destroyed the Twin Trade Towers in New York City. My suitcases were packed full of school supplies and I was determined to get them to the communities that I would visit in Zambia. On November 8, 2001, when I arrived in Lusaka, I met Sister Rosalie and her driver Wilson. The next day we purchased supplies for the long two-day trip to the Sunsentila Daycare Center for orphan children in Ambala. Sister Rosalie bought seed and medicines for the donkey program that she was hoping to establish. If she was successful with this venture, the mission workers would no longer need to carry heavy burdens on their heads and shoulders. I stood in amazement and thought about the food grains bank and the need to grow it. As a barber, I am good with hair cutting clippers, and for decades I joked that one day I would learn to shear sheep. After a visit to the Armstrong family's Pinnacle Haven farm in the township of Horton, I have changed my mind. Farmers must be strong to wrestle the sheep for shearing, and I, for one, know that I could not do it. Having said that, I have a great appreciation for lamb chops and warm wool clothing to keep the chill away. Do you maintain your own clippers? Giving thanks yeah. for farmers is a daily event Very in nice. my life. The Derrick Smith family hosted the 2012 Renfrew County Plowing Match at the Smith Haven Farm in Whitewater Region. It was great to see skilled craftspeople give a demonstration to teach the next generation how the wool is carded, wound, and used to bring us warm socks and sweaters. Watching the 4-H members driving tractors reminded me that learning to drive a tractor is still on my list of things to do in life. My friend Kathleen Brunke is a lady who knows how to work the land with a tractor, and she's always ready to help a friend in need. I have been inspired by David and Joan Reed and their family to bring the agriculture story to life. They have been farming the same land for over 150 years. It was a privilege to watch David harvest and package the sunflowers. Tourists and residents drive long distances to photograph this beautiful view. How much do these bags weigh, David? His products are sold in other countries. But you can also purchase these sunflower seeds locally at m &R Feeds in Renfrew. David has volunteered with many committees and boards over the years. He has given his time and shared his experience to help maintain excellence in farming, not only in the county of Renfrew, but in Canada and other nations. Meeting to keep farmers informed about current legislation and to protect and preserve their lands is done voluntarily by many local farmers. These are the voices that take the concerns of the farmers to other levels of government. When I think of farming, I also think about 4-H. Those who are fortunate to be a part of 4-H live by a creed that I aspire to. I pledge my head to clearer thinking, my heart to greater loyalty, my hands to larger service, my health to better living for my club, my community, my country, and my world. At one 4-H meeting, I was able to capture their creative skills in the barn quilt project that was sponsored by the Ottawa Valley Tourism Association. 4-H offers young farmers an opportunity to show their livestock at local fairs. And if you want a real treat, check out the square dancing. They learn by doing and have fun while they're learning. 4-H members are between the ages of 9 and 21.
Thinking of farming also makes me think about women's institutes, which have helped women to work together for the greater good since 1897. The first women's institute was founded to advocate for the importance of domestic education, family health, and community service. The Art Tree Project is a Burnstown Women's Institute initiative created by Marlene Shaley and proceeds from the project help to fund Burnstown Arts. The project is a creative way to represent your family tree or the history of your organization. Here are two of the more than 100 entries that Ms. Shaley received from across the country. Jim Ferguson was a well-loved and well-respected man in our community. After he passed away, this art tree entry came to life and the following was written by Renfrew Mercury editor Sherry Hyma. For decades, Jim brought the beauty of nature into our lives through his weekly bird column, seen from the hawk's eye. Jim was a kind, caring man with a big heart and a wonderful sense of humor. His love of nature was passed to many of his students, as well as young members of the scouting movement. His love of the outdoors, hiking and camping made him a natural as a leader and official with Scouts Canada, where he volunteered for many years. An annual celebration in the county of Renfrew that is dear to my heart is the powwow that the Algonquins of Pickwaknagon host every August. The drumming, dancing, and teaching of the First Nations people have helped to guide me as their teachings speak to my spirit. These words are taken from Pickwaknagon Art Tree Project entry. Pickwaknagon is situated on the shores of the Bonisher River and Golden Lake in Renfrew County, Ontario. Pickwaknagon is the origin of the world's largest birch bark canoe, and Algonquins voted in the first Algonquin woman chief in all of Canada. The songs that are sung and the dances that are danced are prayers to the Creator. The grand entry is a ceremony, so is the lighting of the sacred fire. Many people will approach the spiritual leader for prayers for their health and that of their family. Days prior to the celebration, a sacred fire is lit and remains ablaze by volunteers for four straight days. An evening social is held on Friday and festivities include the initiation of new dancers and new regalia. Women's institutes take on all kinds of projects. They have preserved this schoolhouse and students occasionally get a chance to see what school life might have been like more than a century ago. Fast forward now to Renfrew's Our Lady of Fatima School in 2020. They even have their own song, written by the late Sister Joan Pecor, who teaches students about the Golden Rule. Although the blackboards are still in these classrooms, teachers are more likely to be using digital technology to communicate with their students. Can you, can you control all of the, the notebooks I can control all the notebooks. at the I same can, time? I can, collect, I can collect just a group of people and control theirs at once. So if I said, you five people, I want you actually not looking at wow. volcanoes, but I want you looking at different types of landforms, I can control those five and say, now you guys go to this website. And, and you can do all of that from the slate. And I can do that from the slate as well. So I can actually sit back here and I can control everything that's supposed to be on my computer as well as on the smart board because they all read through the same program. Now, could you go up to that smart board and, and with your finger manipulate? And Again, that, and that's what you'll see in most in most classrooms that are really fat, as well as schools across the board. That's the way that most, I would say, ninety eight percent of the teachers are operating. So it is a fully interactive board. Even if I have my slate on, I can still come up and manipulate it wow. with my hand or with the pens. So the am slate, I? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, the slate just enables me to step away from the board. Okay. And if say Chelsea or Nora have a problem with something that's happening with their computer. I can then step beside them, right. away from the smart board, look at what their issue is, and I can navigate with and them. show them while I'm doing wow. their, their program. Now I see homework help for grade seven. So can kids get help? Have you got online assistance now? 
We do, and this is specific to this is specific to math. Right. Uh, this is in our blended learning site. So each each student in this classroom at this point is registered in homework help. Right. This is specifically for math because math. Uh, I know sometimes we have a really hard time with some concepts. So this is where actual online tutors are on sort of set times in the evenings and can help any of these guys with any of the material that they happen to be doing. Wow. Okay. That's not even. That doesn't even tap into a lot of the power that comes from this blended learning site, however. Blended learning site, this is actually the blended learning school. But when we go into actual Mr. Mulvihill's class, this is where I have access to all the students. It's almost like their own educational Facebook. That's kind of the, the analogy that we've been using. So within this website, I can post all the assignments that I'd like them to do, as well as links on how to get there. And a lot of the content or curriculum that we've been looking at is all stored inside this classroom. So they have access to it as long as I permit it. I do have a lot of control of this on the back end. I, I control what they see and what they do not see. But all the content is right here. Today's fast-paced lifestyles have boards of education ensuring that students know about proper nutrition. School volunteers keep the refrigerators stocked with healthy snacks that are distributed to students as they learn. Research shows that children are well nourished and more likely to learn, better prepared to learn, better test scores, better behavior in the classroom, better coping skills. Yeah. The fact is, when you look at the research in Canada, we know that Canadian children wouldn't receive a passing grade when it comes to healthy eating. We know from research, and I have some of the stats here, that a third of children aren't getting the two daily servings of milk products. Seven out of ten children aren't getting the minimum five servings of vegetables and fruit. So there's stats to show that they're not eating well. So when Are you working with all of the schools, both boards? Uh, in public health in this area, I work with all the schools. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Elementary and, and secondary. secondary? Yeah. We have school contacts assigned to each school, and then my role is the community dietitian. I mean, I'm focused on the nutrition and developing the nutrition programming, and then working with the school contacts to implement it in the school. But I do a lot of work provincially as part of an, um, oh, okay. it's a public Hi. health nutrition, school nutrition work, because so much of the policy we're advocating is policy that you advocate to the Minister of Education. Mm -hmm. So it's much better if we work as a collaboration to oh, do that. Oh, for sure. It's not about creating just a policy that says we can't offer these foods. Mm -hmm. It's really looking at anywhere in the school where food is offered, whether it's sold, and yeah. looking at a way to engage parents and the school community and students and the school board in saying we embrace and value a culture that promotes healthy eating in our schools. Yeah. Wow. And that's what you're trying to do. Our current Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continues to impress upon citizens that if we want Canada to stay current and compete on an international level, students must learn to code. Educators at Our Lady of Fatima School gave me a short demonstration about what coding is and how to do it. Current changes are happening faster than I can write about it. Many students are able to learn with internet-based classes, but the majority of students still appear to need a more structured, in-class learning environment. <laughs> That's a challenge. Okay, well, I'll be back. You think about that. Here we go. The county of Renfrew is fortunate to have so many excellent educational facilities, including Algonquin College in Pembroke and Willis College in Arnprior. The municipal government of the county of Renfrew became a fully-fledged municipality in 1866. Prior to the county seat being in Pembroke, it was at Perth in Lanark County. Perth was one of the first stops I made while doing my research, and watching the annual kilt run was inspirational and well worth the visit.
During the county's 150th Expo celebrations, I asked employees to choose one thing about their municipality that they liked best. Each one, without knowing the other's answers, named an outdoor space. There were over 1,000 volunteers working to bring the 150 Expo to life. Head Clara Mariah, in the northern reaches of the county, gives us some of the prettiest scenic views and an entrance to the Brent Crater in Algonquin Park, which is Ontario's oldest and largest park. Whether you are hiking the Brent Crater Trail, taking in the view from the observation tower, or getting a bird's eye view from a two-seater aircraft, you will never cease to be amazed at the three kilometer wide site of this ancient meteorite impact. The communities that border the Ottawa River offer some of the best outdoor adventures. Arnprior boasts the tallest tree in Ontario, and whether you are exploring the McNamara Trail or lazing in Robert Simpson Park, your time will be well spent. Deep River hosts a cross-country river swim, and in winter you can find residents racing on cross-country skis with participants of all ages and sizes. It sure is. The snowboarders are always fun to chat with, and they did some great camera work for me for this movie. What a treat it was to spend time on Mount Martin, where everyone treated me like one of their own. We haven't any serious injuries, but a, a, you know sometimes a kid will sprain an ankle, and these guys are down there with the stretcher, bringing them up on the on the T-bar. So mm -hmm. CSPS. Yeah, Canadian Ski Patrol System. Okay. And you've taken all kinds of courses and everything and... Yes, we basically recertify every season. Right. In the fall. But you can't open the hill without somebody on the... You have to have a ski patrol, yes? Two. Two all the time, no matter how many minimum. Okay, thank you. Spending time at Deep River's Potter's Guild made me want to set up my own potter's wheel. With a paid membership, the facility is open to potters who can work on their pieces any time of the day or night. It folds cracks. 
Which is heartbreaking when he made a beautiful poem. So I'm actually just going to press the outside and it brings the wall up all by itself. I'm not going to pull in the back. I'm going to pull in the back. Every time I do something, I do so to the rim, because the rim is really important. Uh, it can crack if it's not compressed properly. And how do you know if it's too thick or too thin on the bottom? Well, we usually use a pin tool and stick it in and measure. But and it tells I don't, you? Yes, and then you can see if I stick a pin tool. It's going to jump around on ice. Okay, so... Last thing you do is you get all hard, you can lift it up. So now you'd still leave it there to dry more before I you would it try hard to. Enough, but you don't, I could move it off. How long does it take? Depends on, on the, the size. Oh, and the weather. Yes, I of course. I could that outside and it, it, it would, I'd have to move it around a little bit in the sun so that it doesn't harden too much on okay. one side, but uh, it, it would dry it. And you just push back. that all the way along? I usually, the... um, by tonight, system, the back just pops off. I can move it somewhere else. The Canadian Clock Museum in Deep River is a grand walk through time, but be sure to give yourself enough time to really enjoy the collection. That would have been three dollars and ninety-nine cents. When that was, made and I wonder what you would have bought for that. Milk, bread, groceries, whatever, rolled them, rolled, rolled, sorry, hand, hand carved, carved. One of his daughters helped him carve some of the trees. But in theory, every hour, the, the dog rope comes up from behind the trees. The geese at the top rotate. The hunter's gun moves up and down a bit. The bird and this little bird, the bird doesn't move. Just looks pretty. But it, he modified an existing uh, clock movement. This museum open? Uh, we opened to the public in May of 2000. It was created in December in Ottawa by Industry Canada as a legal charitable organization. And you just went around and asked everybody for their clocks? Like, how did no, you... No, it's based on a collection I started putting together close to over 35 years ago. TV lamps, what, what age is the television? Around 1960. Okay, well that's probably... When and that's we, what I remember. We would 13 have gotten... channels, and you had the vertical and horizontal hold on controls and no remote. No. Back in your armchair. No remote on this television. So there's your on switch, and those would be for um, color and contrast, but yeah. color, color, it's well, a black, and, black white. and white. Yes, but that. I mean, you know, yeah. for bright or darkness. Yeah, brightness, yeah. And then that's Horizontal for the, and vertical that's hold. For the Remember channel. the thing used to flip sideways or Yes, down. yes, that was the other one. Horizontal. Okay, so mid-1930 punch clock, and you're going to show me how you use it. There you go, stick it in there. Eighteen sixty-seven. Reed organ with ivory keys. You have to pump only the right hand pedal, not the left. Oh, you got to keep pumping. Yeah. <laughs> it's like my grandmother's old. She had a, a sewing machine. Sewing machine, that's it. Oh, I got to keep going. Six-year-olds sit down, grandmothers sit down, everybody in between, teenagers. And 1850s, what are these called? Stereoscopes. Various companies made the holders and then you could, there were probably tens of thousands of designs. You could travel all over the world, but you, you really need to have the two eyes looking separately. I don't think you're going to get 3D with that. 
This There's, was a it, deluxe middle of the road model, tabletop. You had to change the needle every few records because the needle wore down because you're damaging the record every time you played it. But it's all spring driven. Magic. The serial number dates it to 1920. Okay. But the earliest would be 1913? Or earlier. Did we put all the ingredients in and stirred for three minutes rather than having to need all, you know, getting your hands dirty and everything else, so. Yeah, all short, right. Long, short. Okay. Well, that's pretty neat. He said there were, I think he said 22 families on one line initially. 22 families? Mm. Wow. Imagine trying to get Most the Most remember just three digits, short, long, short. Although I haven't written about all the different beliefs and cultures of the county, the Polish community of Wilno stands out as a great place. Finished by I was doing these when the Polish Prime Minister was here. <laughs> oh, and they're yeah, all done. Yeah, and there was a, one of the photographers took at least 10 pictures of me working on these. And this wow. is pure wool. And that's the finished product. And product. how much would you sell those for today? Well, I'm, I'm cheap. I sell those for $12, $13 yeah. a pair. I shouldn't. That's not enough. Yeah. I know. A million dollars! That's I know, not enough. I know that you barely pay for the million. Barry's Bay offers Zurichowski Park. It showcases a local resident, Janu Zurichowski, who was the first test pilot for the Avro Arrow. The one quarter scale replica model of the Avro Arrow stands proudly in the center of the bustling community. At 500 meters above sea level, Foymount is known as one of the highest communities in Ontario. The Royal Canadian Air Force built a radar base on the site in the 1950s, but today you will hear many speak of it as a ghost town. When it comes to business and services, I must say that the downtown Renfrew BIA deserves a salute. Small business owners, municipal employees, construction workers, and all levels of government work together to make Renfrew one of the most accessible and attractive retail sectors in the Ottawa Valley. But that all changed when I caught my man, someone else's wife. Lies and infidelities. Can you hear my heartbeat pounding? They're coming after me. They said, run, run, sister, run. Ditch that truck and bury that gun. Run, run, sister, run. Coming after you for the trouble you've done. And they said, run, run, sister, run. They said that boy was good for none. Run, run, sister, run. Coming after you for the trouble you've done. Sister, run. Sister, run. Sister. It would be impossible to tell this story without writing about hydro generation and distribution. The city of Pembroke had the first electric power for commercial purposes, and they now have their own hydro museum. An industrious man by the name of Thomas Lowe helped Renfrew to see the light, and when Renfrew Power Generation built a new generator, the board chose to name it the Thomas Lowe Generating Station.
Those who work in hydro transmission are equally important as they risk their lives every day in the line of duty so that we can enjoy all the good things that hydro affords us. I tip my hat to those who manage our water and wastewater facilities. I give thanks for clean running water on a daily basis. It was concern for the health of our waterways that nudged me to become a municipal politician in the year 2000. Today, Renfrew has state-of-the-art water and wastewater facilities, and we all continue to value the rivers that run through our communities. When I think of those who work in sanitation and recycling, I am reminded that those who clean the earth are in a special league of their own. Plans for sanitation and recycling are always being discussed and changed at municipal committee meetings. It would be impossible to mention all the skilled tradespeople, healthcare professionals and emergency workers in one movie, but we are fortunate to have plenty of brain and brawn in these departments. Three. Youth, youth Court Justice, right. um, and that's a different ministry than I am, okay? When did that start, do we know? Yes, the, the division of, the, of the, the two ministries, there was, um, in the old days, there was the Juvenile Delinquency Act, right. and so once you turned 16, you became an adult. Two ministries took care of it, Youth Court, Adult Court. You have, you don't, we don't share the same buildings, uh, you cannot have Youth Court and Adult Court run simultaneously, the entire jail systems are totally separated. You cannot mix the two, and that, hence that's why you have the youth justice system and the adult system we find today. But that Most of the people that I and our other officers receive have not come through the youth course justice system. So that's got to be something good, okay. right? There yeah. must be something good happening there because we're not getting tons of, of Repeat people. Repeat offenders from that. That's right. Good. Why the stats have changed the way they have, but the stats in Canada, the United States, most of Western Europe, Australia, New Zealand, all show a consistent drop in crime rates for the last decade. It's been more than a decade, but solid. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, good. And, and, and in Canada, I think it's closer to 15 years. Wow. Uh, part of that could be structural. In other words, it's harder to steal a car today because yeah. they have immobilizers. Um, uh, houses are more secure. Um, but I think the really major reason is, is that we have become a more law-abiding society. As we continue to grow our roots, we will conserve, respect, and enjoy all that the country has to offer. We are a kind and caring people who work together today to build a better tomorrow for the generations to come. We share our education and skills freely to help others on their journey, and our minds are always open to new opportunities. The County of Renfrew separated from the County of Lanark in 1861 and is now the largest county in the province of Ontario. The original separation documents were signed by John A. Macdonald, who six years later became the first Prime Minister of Canada. Growing Our Roots is the short story that took 32 years to write, compose, capture, edit, and present but it has helped me to get to know the county and make new friends along the way. My hope was to meet those who had lived and worked here all their lives and to learn how they had managed through the years to stay well and prosper. This curiosity has been satisfied, and I am a better person for my research and adventures. Without newsprint companies, libraries, archives, museums, artists, and all of the authors who have recorded events before me, I would never have been able to write this story. For over 60 years, I have enjoyed living in this county, and the people that I have met make me want to stay. I traveled to four continents and over 40 countries before I truly appreciated the county of Renfrew in my own backyard. T.S. Eliot once said, We will not cease from exploration, and the end of all exploring will be to arrive where we started and to know the place for the first time. In 1988, when my mother became ill, I knew I must stay by her side and give her the nursing care she needed. 
This book, that has become a movie, gave me something to think about besides her illness, and it kept me from brooding about her loss. That's a jig. That's a jig. Two okay. Four time. It goes sing. Okay. <laughs> Growing our roots also gave me reason to venture beyond my home community of Renfrew. Little did I know when I began this challenge of getting to know my neighbors that I would become a three-term municipal politician in the town of Renfrew. Being a municipal councillor meant that personal writing and movie making would have to be put on a shelf until politics had finished with me. While I was beginning my Renfrew County research, a town of Renfrew story and movie came to me at the same time. An author friend, Carol Bennett McQuaid, convinced me to start a children's series that was running around in my head. How long will it take to make the movie, people asked as I recorded. When will it be finished? Will it play at Renfrew's O'Brien Theatre, as my movies Now and Again and The Robin's Nest had done? How could I make people understand about all the technical challenges and learning curves that I experience every day with computer applications that are constantly changing? Before I began to write this story, I wanted to portray each and every resident contributing in their own way. Each of us have a contribution to make, and if our contribution makes the world a better place to be, it is well worth the effort. People I know, and those I will never meet, will be a part of this story. Our ancestors, and those who have yet to arrive, will be colorful threads that keep us stitched securely together. Thank you to my loving family and friends for supporting my passion for writing books, making music, and movies. Like those who have gone before me, education, employment, entertainment, and recreation are treasures that I value, but it is spending time with you that makes my life worthwhile. I spent every day pushing and pursuing to be my best self in wrestling every single day of that journey. You know, I've been training in an elite training environment for every single day of that whole journey, and I knew that what I was doing for each one of those days leading in was gonna be enough. And I knew that what I, what I had been doing was gonna be enough on that one day. Growing our roots and staying naturally active in the county of Renfrew will serve us well for generations to come. So it says, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Mm -hmm. And then the other side is the Provincial Spring Games, Spring Games Kingston 2012. So a bunch of people from Renfrew went to Kingston to compete, and you came home with half the medals. <laughs> yep. Or at least a quarter four of them, anyway. Yeah, quite a four of them. So, and they were all for bowling, mm -hmm. and low, no, high single. High average. High average. High cross. High cross. And high game. And high game. And high... Single is the best score. High mm -hmm. average is all the best of the scores. The high cross is, is the a cross section of, of all the the games combined. Okay, and then high average. Mm -hmm. I think I said that again. Yeah. But that is amazing. I think that's you're definitely to be congratulated. Thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good day. I'm happy to meet you. Would you sit and talk a while? I see you're busy. You've got to run now and tell these country minds. Give me a tractor. I'd like to help you. I'll work here by your side. When I'm near you, my heart's in rapture. And this smile feels ten feet wide These words are here to guide me In this song of love it seems They are my way of telling you About my hopes and dreams The music lifts my spirit 
these gentle fingertips. Good day. I'm happy to meet you. Would you sit and talk?